Welcome back. This is the AI Learning Lab. I'm Kyle Shannon and my Wi-Fi sucks. <laughs> so I was live and then I was not live and then I was sort of live and then everyone disappeared and then they started to come back and then it went away. But uh, this is the AI Learning Lab. If you got questions about AI, pop them in the comments. Uh, if you're new to AI, that's the official ChatGPT website right there and a couple other resources. I am not affiliated with them in any way other than uh, I'm trying to get people to get curious about AI. Um, it doesn't want you to talk about Boston. Apparently not. Uh, yeah, so if you were asking about Boston before, um, this document... The city of Boston, it is an incredibly well thought out, well organized, thoughtful, concise, useful um, set of guidelines from a city, from a municipi municipality. I think my computer's dying. Um, so. I think that's absolutely fascinating. And someone was asking me about schools, and I thought it was the, the school system in Boston, but it wasn't. It was the city of Boston. And then it's the New York City school district is reversing their ban of chat GPT. Sorry, I'm changing my... I'm plugging in my laptop, because otherwise she is going to die. So, um, yeah. Welcome back. Uh, there's 18 of you here now. Welcome, all 18 of you. Hopefully that'll go up a bit, but nice to see everybody. Uh, this is the AI Learning Lab. If you got questions about AI, pop them in the comments below. Um, I'll do what I can about them. Um, now it looks like some folks are coming in. Uh, feel free to share this uh, chat if you um, think people might enjoy learning about AI, chatting about it. Um, I'm happy to do that. So, greetings from Coyote, California. Greetings, greetings indeed. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. I'm from uh, Denver, Colorado here. I'm, a, I'm an ex-New Yorker. I'm a New Yorker at heart. I miss New York real bad. But we make our choices, so I chose to come out to Denver. Denver's nice, but it ain't New York. Mm-mm-mm. I like the sauciness of New York. Wow, now we're up to 120 folks. Hey, everybody, this is the AI Learning Lab. Lab, lab, lamb. Uh, my name's Kyle Shannon. Um, I've got, I'm an entrepreneur, multiple time entrepreneur. I'm a CEO of a company called Storyvine, which is a, an automated uh, video production platform, a video storytelling platform. And, uh, and but it's, it's not, I'm adding AI to it, but it's not an AI driven company. Yet it's coming. Uh, we're doing AI generated transcriptions, so we're we're starting to incorporate some things into it. Um, so that's pretty exciting. But this channel is all about getting people up to speed on ChatGPT and generative AI and answering questions. So if you have questions about AI, ask them in the comments below. I will try to keep up with them. Um, I either get yelled at for skipping questions or for taking <laughs> for not keeping up with questions. So I will screw up somehow. Uh, I've also been booted off live twice now for community guidelines because I've never read them and I don't really give a shit about them. Uh, but but uh, I don't know why I've gotten kicked off, but I just try to I just try to talk the truth about AI here. All right. What do you think about the AI drone that took out its operator? Did it actually take out the operator? Did it actually shoot them down like, you know, or shoot shoot down the thing or was it a test? I don't know. I, I don't know enough about that. But, you know. These tools are, like the generative AI tools, the large language model tools, they've been out for a while. They've been out for, for a bunch of years. The the really sophisticated ones like GPT-4 are relatively new. But you got to think that the military's had their hands on some fancy-ass AI shit for a while. Um, I would assume the Air Force thing was testing, but if they're doing live fire exercises with AI-driven drones... And the drones take on a mind of their own? Well, that's just fucking stupid. So they should not do that until they got this shit worked out. Uh, I think they need to uh, put some safety measures in place. Okay. Uh, 
You're live is how I learned about ChatGPT, and now I'm obsessed. Thank you. You're welcome. Wait, what's your name? Holly. Holly. You're welcome, Holly. I appreciate the uh, I appreciate the kind words. Yeah, that's why I'm here. The whole the whole point here is just you know um, just talk about this stuff, get it out there. It's a little late tonight. I was out at a CEO soiree, hanging out with a bunch of CEOs here in Denver, uh, which was kind of fun. But uh, this is more fun. I like this better than hanging out with boring CEO types. Um, what's the longest length prompt that you have used? Is it worth a super long prompt? That's actually a really good question. Um, so if, if you want to have ChatGPT analyze a big long chunk of text, um, so, so, so one thing I've done, one thing I did that, that would live in the neighborhood of a long prompt was based on this text, and then I literally copied and pasted my entire LinkedIn profile. And then I pasted in three different bios that I've written about me over the years. And then I pasted in like an article I wrote. So I pasted in three really long things. But the prompt was only based on all this crap. And then I said, write me a whatever, three or four paragraph bio um, uh, about me uh, f for speaking at an AI conference, basically. So add AI to my bio, right? And then so so the prompt itself was actually short, but what I pasted in was quite long. Um, the the current limit to ChatGPT is 4,000 tokens or 3,000 words. GPT-4 will ultimately go to 32,000 and probably pretty quickly exceed that. There's a model out there right now called Claude, Claude. 100k by a company called Anthropic. And if you go to po.com, which I'll go to right now, I think I actually have it up here somewhere. Come on. Come on, internet. Is my internet sucking? Okay. So if you go to po.com, what po is, is it's it's a chat GPT. GPT-4 is GPT-4. Claude, Claude Instant 100K and Claude Instant are from Anthropic, which is a, a company I'm a big fan of, and then there's ChatGPT. But Claude Instant 100K means 100,000 tokens. You can paste in a 75,000 word document into Claude 100K, and it will parse it. I, I took a transcript from one of the AI salons that I run every every other week, um, we, we record them and, and transcribe them, and I pasted a transcription in. It was like 56 pages, and then just started started asking it to summarize things about the salon. So you can do that. I assume what you're asking here, though, I know I answered a lot of uh, things there, um, but what I assume you're a a asking is, does it make sense to do long, complicated prompts, like all in one shot, and then try to get the perfect answer out of it? My my experience is that it's not good to do that. What's good to do is actually break it up into discrete little chunks. So if you want to write the great American novel, for example, maybe what you start with is prompted to say, teach me about different kinds of story frameworks. And it will tell you about Save the Cat and Hero's Journey and what, whatever different frameworks there are. And, and then you can say, okay, based on... You know why don't why don't you combine the save the cat story framework with Aristotle's <laughs> theory of story? I don't know. Sorry, not educated enough there. Why don't you take these two story frameworks and give me a hybrid of those? Because I kind of like both of them. And then um, ask me a series of questions about my story until you have enough information to write me an outline. And then go back and forth with it. And then say, okay. Write me that outline. And then if you like the outline, great. If you don't like the outline, say, hey, around the second act, you know, it took a dark turn. You know, I was thinking of this more like a comedy. And so rewrite the outline as that. And then, you know, go in and have do a little prompt about the, you know, first scene or, or a middle scene or whatever it is. So I've found that it's better to kind of break your prompts up. Think of ChatGPT less like a Google search where you're trying to put in the perfect prompt to get back the perfect answer and more like you've got a collaborative partner that's smarter than anyone you've ever fucking met because that's what it's like. 20 years of AI, don't quite know what that means, but yes, it's been around for a while. 
Um, but November 30th, the day, November 30th, 2022, six months ago, five months ago, um, is the day that everything changed. That's the day that ChatGPT came out. Here's my contention. Um, back in the mid 90s, um, when Tim Berners-Lee uh, launched the World Wide Web, the internet had been around for decades, but it was largely um, the territory of scientists and researchers and things like that. And when the World Wide Web came out, it kind of made this thing available to the rest of us. And that was when I kind of pounced on it and said, I'm going to start a magazine and I'm going to start an agency and I'm going to do everything I can to get my head around this thing because I think it's going to change everything. And it did. Um, and I think this is another one. So uh, AI has been around for, you know, a couple of decades now, three, four or five decades, depending on where you define where it began. And but ChatGPT is the thing that said, hey, everyone who's not a da data scientist how would you like to play with something that's fucking magic? And and 100 million people did in six weeks. In six weeks, ChatGPT went from zero users to 100 million users. That's staggering. Uh, context is everything. Context is absolutely everything. That's in, in regard to prompting, I assume. And I agree with you. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Yeah. Oh, it was a simulated test, but AI determined that the operator was pre preventing its objective. Yeah, and it went back and shot him down. That's, okay, good. I'm glad it was a simulated test. I can't imagine that the Air Force was was doing li live fire with large language models, especially if they're, you know, basing it on, you know, GPT-4 that came out five months ago <laughs> from a private company. Yeah, they got some, <laughs> they got some, uh, they got some, what do they call it? Some testing to do. They got some testing to do there. Okay. Um, played with Vicuna, uh, oh, have I played with Vicuna or other local LLMs? I haven't, uh, well, that's not true. I played with, what did I play with? There's one called GPT for all. Is that right? That you don't need to do any sort of technical installation. Let me see if that's right. GPT for all. Yeah. A free to use locally running privately aware chat bot, no GPT or GPU or internet required a little bit. Um, I think open source large language models are going to be huge. Um, there was an interesting um, document that was leaked from Google a few weeks back about that, that was titled, uh, We Have No Moat, meaning we have no intellectual property defensive defenses that... that um, open source models for a hundred dollars with an open source model that can fit on a thumb drive <laughs> um, are essentially almost at the same performance level as what Google spent ten million dollars training and open AI spent five million dollars training um, so I, I think they're going to be quite a big deal also the open source large language models don't have the the safety guardrails that these other things do which may or may not be a good thing all right um, context is everything. Okay, let's see. Can you talk about how ChatGPT... Wait, can you talk about how to, I guess, put ChatGPT into learning mode? Well, so so every time we use ChatGPT, they're, they're using it to train and refine the core model. Or not the core model. They're they're, they're using it to to, ref, to to fine tune the the base large language model. That the training for the base model stopped at September twenty twenty one. All of the stuff that we've been doing since is kind of adding to a layer on top of it, for lack of a better term. And um, so so it's constantly learning. If what you're referring to is how do you train it on your data, there's a couple of couple of issues there. If you want to train a large language model on a lot of your data, then you need to use something like LangChain, L-A-N-G, Chain, which is a series of tools that allows you to embed your own data, put it into what's called a vector database, good geeky terms here, and then be able to search on those and be able to connect it to Google and things like that. And then you can have your own sort of version of ChatGPT trained up on your own data. That's called LangChain. It's relatively straightforward to install, but it's geeky enough that, like, I haven't done it yet because it's just like you need to know some command line stuff, and it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, you can also do what's called, I think it's called few-shot learning. 
which is basically this. Let's say, let's say you're a writer and you've got a particular style. When you blog, you blog with, I don't know, wit and charm. Um, rather than saying, ChatGPT, write me a blog with wit and charm, what you can say is, based on this blog post, and then you paste your blog post into ChatGPT, write me a blog about topic A, B, C, or D with the following facts and figures in it, um, and use that earlier example um, for tone, match the tone of that earlier piece. So you can train in a single session, you can train ChatGPT to... Uh, to mimic you. Um, so it's it's pretty good at that. Again, it's got this limited, what's called context window. You have kind of this, think of it like a 3,000 word sliding window where anything within 3,000 words, as, as you generate more and more stuff, the stuff at the top is going to get forgotten. So sometimes you're working with ChatGPT and it's working great. And then all of a sudden it's like, it forgot what you were talking about. That's because it literally forgot what you were talking about. So that's some of the limitations right now. All right. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Can I explain? Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to read this. Can I explain how to add, wait, how add-ons work? What the add-ons uh, do certain things. Can't, the can't, chat can't do without. Okay. So let me show you plugins. Plugins are interesting. I tried to show them last night, and they they were it was not behaving. GPT has been, I think it's been overloaded for the past couple of days because um, my Zapier automations are a little. So if you're at ChatGPT, in order to access plugins, you have to be a ChatGPT Plus member. So the the little plus sign here um, means that I. <laughs> This is my little badge that says, I pay you 20 bucks a month, but what you get is you get access to GPT-4. Then to turn on these fancy new settings, you go to your settings, and then in your settings, you go to beta features, and you turn on browse with Bing, which is chat GPT connected to the internet, and you turn on plugins. So that's how you turn the stuff on. Now, when you go to ChatGPT, you have three options. Hang on, let me see if I can get this to focus. That's a little better. Um, you have three options. You've got default, which is basically the old GPT-4 not connected to the internet. So that's the one that says, I don't know anything past September 2021. You've got browse uh, with Bing beta. Um, so let me let me con you know do a chat with, with the one connected to the internet. So now I can say, um, what's the weather... For the next three days in Denver, question mark. So, obviously, you couldn't do that if it weren't connected to the internet. But now it says browsing the web. It says Denver weather forecast for the next three days. Clicked on a link. You can open this up and see what it's doing. So, it clicked on weather.com. It's thinking. It's thinking. It's reading content. Right, so so it is off performing functions, and now it's saying the weather forecast is Friday. The temperature is expected to be between fifty two and seventy seven. Saturday, fifty and sixty three, with rainstorms and thunderstorms. It's been raining and thundering so much here in in Denver. It's bizarre. It's like East Coast kind of kind of thunderstorms for the past two or three weeks. It's been very very strange. Um, so anyway, that's how you use that one. Okay, so now. If we want to use plugins, um, you click on the little plugins tab, and then there's a there's this pop up menu at the top um, where you've got these are your installed plugins. So I went to the plugin store and I found things that looked interesting, and I installed a bunch of them, and then you can activate up to three of them at a time. So the two that I've got activated right now are Ask Your PDF and link reader. And so um, so what it will do is I can just pop in a URL and it will go to that URL and read it. So let me go find, is this a PDF? Yeah, this is a PDF. So this is the Boston um, guidelines for using generative AI. So I copied that URL. So I'm gonna come back over here to ChatGPT and I'm gonna pop in um, based on this, colon, 
And then I'm holding down the shift key to make some line breaks without submitting it. And then I popped in my URL there. And then I'm going to say, what are the top three rec recommendations, spelled very wrong, um, from this article? Boom. And so now it should figure out that it needs to go use one of its plugins. So it says using Ask Your PDF. And if I open this up, here's a little chunk of code that it gave. It generated a summary of the piece. Uh, and then it said, based on the document, the top three recommendations are Be specific about prompts, summarizing text, coding and programming. Oh, I see. So it's got it's kind of categorized them from page four, drafting documents or letters. Okay, so so the, the top three recommendations are you can use it to draft documents or letters, you can use it to summarize text, and you can use it for coding and programming. And then it gives me some, some bullets from it. So th what the plugins do is they give you additional little superpowers that you you can have these combinations of them installed. Like for example, you might have some food related things like open table for, for making reservations and whatever the grocery one is for delivering groceries and you could get calories from Wolfram Alpha. So you can make your own little applications by combining the, uh, the plugin. So I hope that answers how those work and what they are. It's taken me a while to get my head around them. It's, it's a bizarre kind of concept that you've got this thing that you can sort of ask anything in any order, and then it kind of figures out which of those plugins it needs to use based on what you're asking, and then it kind of puts them together. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. All this stuff is very, very new. But here's the other thing about plugins. Um, Microsoft just announced that Bing and Office 365 and... Windows 11 and everything that's going to have GPT-4 built into it is all going to use the open plugin architecture. So any plugins that you use in ChatGPT are also going to work in all the Microsoft products. So this is going to be, this is like the app store on crack um, because all of these things are going to be intermingled and in intermixed and dynamically called. It's going to be absolutely wild. So if you want to start getting your heads around it, I think it's worth playing with. Okay, this is the AI Learning Lab. If you are new here, hello, welcome. I'm Kyle Shannon. I like talking about AI crap, and I'm a pain in the ass, and I'm a Gen X curmudgeon, and I swear. Um, that URL, chat.openai.com, that's the official ChatGPT website. There's a lot of scam sites and scam apps out there, so that's the official one. They have an official app now, too. Um, but basically, I'd say start there. Um, start playing with this stuff. Start using it. It's it's incredibly powerful. And so what I talk about here is just sort of answering questions. If you have any questions about AI, pop them into the comments. I try to keep up with them. I'm old. My eyes are going. You know, all that sort of stuff. Um, Jim Carrey. I don't know what that means. I don't think I look like Jim Carrey. But maybe I'm making faces like Jim Carrey. <laughs> I don't think that was Jim Carrey at all, but it was something. It was some bad cartoon of a character, wasn't it? Oh, wow. I'm really behind on my comments. So here's what I'm doing now. I'm scrolling back up through the comments. So if you think I'm ignoring you or I'm not paying attention to the latest things, that's because I'm way back up at the top. All right. But I am trying to answer everyone's. Okay. Can I explain the add-ons? I just did that. Okay. Tree of Thoughts and Other uh, des Descretized? I don't know what that word is. Discretized. I don't know what that means. Prompting methods have been shown to increase accuracy. Yeah, there's there's a lot of different methods where where the answers that a large language model gives you are going to be run through other checks and balances, basically. Like Anthropic is one. They've got a thing called the Constitutional Learning Model where they write a set of rules. And then when it produces an answer, it checks that answer against the rules. And if it violates any of those rules, it rewrites it until it gets it. So, so it follows them. I think that whole line of sort of multi-step um, answer review before it gives you the answer, I think that's going to be an incredibly common and, and really important thing for things like the Air Force, where, where the plane went back and attacked the operator in the simulation. Okay, cool. 
That helps. I'm getting better with these prompts. Yeah, keep playing with the prompts. Keep, again, with the prompts. Don't, I, I think prompt engineering is the wrong term. It It is kind of like programming with natural language, um, but I prefer the term prompt crafting. Think of it like a conversation that you're having with a really smart intern or a really smart creative collaborator. That's that's kind of what it's like. And if, if you start to mentally shift from I've got to write the perfect prompt to let me just start talking to this thing and see if if together we can solve a problem. It's like it's like collaboration. It's like a Saturday afternoon movie from when we were kids. When I was a kid, we had Saturday morning TV. I'm new to this. Love the topic. Awesome. Welcome. Um, if if you're new to this, please go to that website. That's the uh, chat.openai.com is the official chat GPT website. I don't get anything from that. I just have it because that's the official one. And I think it's important for people to play with it. Prompts.chat is a pretty cool site that'll teach you how to do prompting. It gives you kind of this never ending list of prompts that you can just copy and paste and play with and start to explore how fucking powerful this thing is. And then futurepedia.io is just a list of lots and lots of AI tools. There, there, I mean, there are so many tools being released into the wild right now, it's impossible to keep up with it. Do I think OpenAI will go public soon? I do not. I think they're going to keep it private for as long as they can. Um, I, I, think, I think being public puts them in a whole different place. And Sam Altman's got it as a capped profit for profit, meaning that the investors, I don't think can make more than 100x on their investment, or it might be 10x, but I think it's 100x, might be 1000x, I don't know, whatever. There's some cap on the on the limit. So it's not quite a nonprofit, which pissed Elon Musk off enough that he went and started a competitor. Because, uh, <laughs> because he's Elon. Um, and he, he did that a week after saying we should take a six month pause on developing uh AI technology started a competitor to open AI a week later. I thought that was pretty, pretty funny. Um, all right. I was just scrolling and found this. Great to see you at dinner tonight. Oh, hey. <laughs> nice, nice to see you, Danny. We were, we were at a uh, CEO soiree. We were just a bunch of CEOs hanging out, eating sort of Mexican food, talking shop, you know, what you do. <laughs> all right. Uh, do you see the FDA approved Elon's Neuralink for human trials? I know that's crazy. If you don't know what Neuralink is, basically Elon Musk's uh, sort of contention is that these these fanciful phones we have in our pockets um, are, are, you know, we're cyborgs already, but we have a really shitty interface. And the, the shitty interface is our eyeballs and how long it takes the signal to get to our brain and how long it takes our brain to process all that crap. Uh, and he said, if you could just connect your, you know, basically the, the data in your smartphone directly into your brain, uh, then you can do it. So it's it's a remarkable piece of technology. If you haven't watched videos on it, it's well worth it. He basically had to invent a robot company to do the surgery, to install these little, you know, thinner than hair like um, electrodes into your brain. And it, it literally sort of punches that in. It figures out where the blood vessels are and punches the electrode in between the blood vessels. It's insane. Um, so anyway, yeah, so they're doing human trials on that. And there was also, there was a guy in, was it France or Greece? Somewhere in Europe, um, a guy had been paralyzed for 12 years uh, that they they used large language models to read his brain scans and had him think about moving his legs. Then they did a Bluetooth bridge down to an, um, an, uh, a set of electrodes on his spine, and now he's walking. So they basically used AI to bridge um, a motorcycle injury after 12 years. It's amazing. This is so hard, but I'm trying. Tell me what's hard about it. I'll do what I can to help. Um, just, just keep trying. Just keep playing. Here's, here's one of the tricks of if, if you're, if you're a little flummoxed about what to do with ChatGPT, it's very overwhelming. When you have a tool that can essentially do anything, from like, let's talk philosophy of Plato to, you know, tell me about quantum physics and anything in between. Um, it, it can be very overwhelming. So one thing that I found that helps is pick a really small project in your life, like a specific project. I want to eat better. Okay, have it create a new nutrition plan for you and then have it generate um, the shopping list and then have it organize the shopping list by section of the grocery store 
um, to your specific grocery store, and it will probably do it. Uh, but but pick small little discrete projects that you have to solve a problem and then use the tools to solve that, and you'll get better at, at using it because otherwise it just gets completely overwhelming. Is the model's capacity to remember and build conversations limited by the max amount of tokens? In a single session, yes. If you use something like um, Langchain, which is a series of tools strung t- together. So Langchain, you've got the large language model, right? So think chat GPT, GPT-3 or 4. You've got an embedding engine where you're taking some amount of data and you're be- embedding it, you're making it sort of large language model friendly. You've got a, a, what's it called? A vector database that stores that. That vector database is where you store the memory. Um, And then you've got like tools like connecting to Google and things like that. So Langchain strings these things together and it can have longer term memory. But if you're just talking about chat GPT, it's limited to the context window, which is, is, 3,000 words, 4,000 tokens. So yes, that's if, if you're talking within a single session within chat GPT, however long your context window is, that's kind of how long your memory is, which can be a pain in the ass. If you're, if you're working on, on something long, generating lots of content, it can forget the earlier shit and you have to kind of go back and grab stuff and keep moving it down into the conversation. Um, let's see, Llamas Freak... Oh, Llama's leak from Meta is showing you can get 99% similar performance with local use. Yeah, exactly. This is so so if you don't know, so Meta, Facebook, their large language models like ChatGPT, the core models actually leaked and then the developer community was like, "Cool, we'll take those." And what they actually did, this was brilliant. And this happened within like 2 weeks. Um, they took this leaked large language model and they said, hey, why don't we take GPT-4 and have it train the large language model to do what it does? And they figured out a way to basically have ChatGPT generate all the training that trained the smaller large language model. And so they're sort of knocking these things out like once a week. They'll, they'll come out with ones that, like, that, that are now approaching GPT-4 level quality, passing similar kinds of tests. Um, where they train it on like a hundred dollars of compute time. I mean, it's staggering, and and they're 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 optimizing them. One of the things they figured out, they call it quanti- quantization. I think is that what they call it? Is that the right number of syllables? Quantization. I think, yeah. Um, basically, where, where they're they're stripping out like ninety percent of the data out of these large language models, and they still work. Like they still work remarkably well. So what what they're doing is like pulling out ninety percent of the volume of data compressing them and and making like 5 10 you know 50 megabyte installs that you can install on a phone and run on a phone um and and they're incredibly high level of of performance it's amazing um okay check out text generation web ui web ui similar things exist for image gen but it makes it easy okay i will do that what types of jobs will be displaced <sighs> I think almost every knowledge working job, creative job, consulting job, anything where you're using knowledge is going to be disrupted massively, like massively. And then I think any job that's impacted by complex systems, so think, you know, IT, security, um, those are all knowledge workers, uh, logistics, um, all sorts of things like that, where you might have people who've got jobs where they're doing data entry or data analysis or things like that, where kind of the low level execution of, of all of the really complicated stuff are, are probably going to be automated out and, and, and just disrupted away. But you're going to, you're going to see disruptions. I, I mean, I'm already starting to see it in the advertising world where, um, the, just the rules are changing kind of in real time for what you can charge for creative and how long how long you can take to turn it around. Like clients are already expecting higher quality results, faster and cheaper. There, there used to be this old adage in the ad game called, you, you know, good, fast and cheap. You can have any two of the three, right? It can be fast and good, but not cheap. Or it can be fast and cheap, but not good. Well, with generative AI, you can have all three. 
Um, and I think clients are starting to know that. So I think I don't think that any jobs are safe, safe from disruption, um, largely speaking. Um, I almost want to let AI save Earth at this point. I, you know what? I'm with you. Like, I feel like, who's that, Alexander? I, yeah, I, I feel like we've, we've certainly here in America, but, but it seems like we're, we're kind of tanking this thing globally as well. It, it just feels like we've gotten so divisive and weird in, in this country that um, as painful as a reset's going to be, I think we need a reset. And I think COVID was the beginning of that reset. And I think generative AI is the second half of that reset. The good news about generative AI is that while it's going to displace a lot of people and disrupt a lot of jobs, it's also putting these superpowers in the hands of the people that are being displaced. So the implication of that, the way I think about it is, okay, um, someone decided not to learn AI and they got laid off from their job or they just, you know, were doing their job and all of a sudden AI, you know, the boss said, hey, we're going to have AI do that now. Good luck. Um, a lot of those people are going to be like, well, wait a minute. And, and uh, you know, I didn't ask for this. And they're going to find that job doesn't exist for them anymore. And some people are going to be, you know, upset and pissed off and sad and kind of stay in that place, right? They'll, they'll go into sort of um, just kind of despair. I think some people will be, um, you know, displaced and they're like, okay, well, I'm going to learn these tools and I'm going to go back and I'm going to compete against my ex, you know, my ex employer. So I think we'll see some innovation like that. And then I think you're going to see a whole nother wave of people that are like, they get laid off from the job. It's going to be initially really painful. And then what they're going to realize is I hated that job anyway. I'm glad I don't have that job. You know what I've always wanted to do? Blank. And then they'll use generative AI to, to completely reinvent themselves. I think we're going to just see an absolute explosion of people reinventing themselves, inventing things, um, creative expression. I, I, think, I think we are entering what I'm calling the great renaissance um, that's going to make the traditional renaissance look, look quaint by comparison. Um, I heard it can access hyperlinks posted. Yeah, that's I just showed that before. So now I've got two plugins installed. One's called Ask Your PDF, and another one I have turned on is called Link Reader. And you can basically just go get any website. So let me pop over here to the Twitter. Bum, 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 Twitter. Well, let's go find a an article. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, that's just my profile. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Let's type in white paper. By the way, I'm in Denver, and the Denver Nuggets won their game against the Miami Heat tonight. We're going to see a, a, a Denver championship. Well, I mean, we are seeing the championship. Are we going to see them as champions? I can't get it to focus anymore. Come on. Oh, dang it. There we go. Um, let me go grab a white paper. Advancing the next generation of... Download it now. Okay, this is a white paper. Is there anything here? Oh, download white paper. Is this going to make me fill out a form? No. Okay. So that's PDF. So I can just grab that URL. Then I can pop over here to ChatGPT and go, based on this, and there's the URL, um, please tell me what this is about as if I were a five-year-old. <laughs> Bang! And then... Assuming it works, it should fire up one of the plugins. Okay, using Ask Your PDF, it's doing it. And let's see what it thinks a five-year-old should know about that article. I don't. I didn't even look at what that article was called. So, yeah, I got nothing. So let's see what it comes up with. I'm sorry, but there was an issue processing the PDF. All right, so that one didn't work. Uh uh uh. uh. Upload your document. Oh, that's interesting. I have a feeling. Click here to upload your document. I've never seen this before. Well, I don't feel like doing it. Anyway, so so yeah, so what the plugins do is is they kind of extend what 
what um, ChatGPT can do. Uh, 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 um, it says ChatGPT can't refer. It says ChatGPT can't refer online website. Yeah, so if you're not paying for ChatGPT Plus, you don't have access to GPT-4. If you do have access to, to Plus, then you can turn on web browsing. The other thing you can do is you can use Bing.com. So if you go to Bing.com, it says, ask me anything. There's ChatGPT. And there's sort of a more creative version, a more balanced version, and a more precise version. This is GPT-4, and it's connected to the internet. So... Um, so yeah, you can use all that and that, and Bing is going to support plugins. So if you're new here, that's the official chat GPT URL. So go there and start playing and then ask me any questions you have about AI. It repeats itself sometimes too. Yeah, it does. It also lies a lot. I like to think of chat GPT as mansplaining as a service because <laughs> it will confidently tell you what it thinks, even if it's wrong. Jump scare. You mentioned Zapier. Do I like it? How do you use it? So I've been using Zapier to create, I'll show you a couple of things I've done with it. One organization that I'm actually the chief generative officer for. I don't know that there are any other chief generative officers in the world. I think I might be the first. But we created this thing called the challenge engine, which you can give it a business challenge. So this is a, a little Google form here that's embedded on the website. You put in your email, your business category, you give it a challenge that you're facing, answer a couple of questions about it, and then within a few minutes, let me pop over here to Gmail, within a few minutes of asking the challenge engine about your challenge, Uh, 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 uh. So I got to find one of the answers here. Challenge engine response. It generates an email that talks about, you know, it restates your, hang on. There we go. It restates uh, what your challenge was, and then it provides you with three questions in six different categories. And so Zapier takes the input of the Google form. It sends the, the data that it collected in a prompt that, that I created with the team at Content Evolution. It sends that to OpenAI. Um, it gets back a bunch of raw content. And then I basically send that raw content back to OpenAI to do all the, the HTML formatting. So, so all of the HTML formatting in this email was done automatically by... Um, by some just some decently clever coding and by a, a nice prompt, uh, a well-constructed prompt to open AI. And then it takes the output of that HTML, pops it in an email and sends that via Gmail. So that's one of the things I've built. So I've been building these, these content generation engines um, with Zapier. Do I like it? It's a janky piece of shit but they've got like 5,000 services connected to it. Um, it's the, the, the challenge with all of the no-code um, tools is that they are, they, to make them no-code, they have to put a lot of interface in front of the code, which makes it unnecessarily complicated. So you kind of have to learn all of the intricacies of how their no-code stuff isn't coding, which is kind of like coding. Like it's it's probably about as easy to learn coding as to learn Zapier, but not really. Once you kind of learn the quirks of, of Zapier, you can knock stuff out pretty quick. The problem with it is just you're using, what Zapier effectively does is it is it links together multiple API services. So you're taking multiple cloud services and just kind of stacking them on top of one another to make these automations. If any one of those cloud services goes down, your whole application kind of fails. I mean, but that's that's cloud computing in general. But when you're using something like Zapier, if, if they change some code or the third party changes code, it messes stuff up. But I like it. It's pretty good. There's one out there called Make, M-A-K-E, that um, looks good, looks really pretty. I think it's newer. So, But it's probably got some, some uh, you know, some, some quirks to it as well, but it, it looks prettier. 
than Zapier. Um, others need to download to use. I don't know what you're talking about there. Um, maybe you need a very, maybe you need a new provider. You unfortunately lagging very often. Yeah, my um, Wi-Fi here is horseshit. It's Xfinity and it's bad. If anyone knows anyone at Xfinity, tell them to get their shit together in North Denver. It's really bad. It's really bad. Can you upload files? Uh, you can't right now on ChatGPT, but there's a there's a, a mode coming in ChatGPT called Code Interpreter where you can upload files, and it is remarkable. Um, Zapier, last I used IRT. I don't know what that means, IRT, in, in real time. Uh, 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 uh. Ask its analysis for the Ukraine and R Russian conflict. Nah. I I've, I've been I've been booted off of live twice now for 7 days each for community guidelines. I have no fucking idea what I said, but the second time I was booted off, I was talking about um someone asked me about bias in the models and I was explaining how the bias might get in there and and just in talking about it they kicked me off. So, I don't know. I'm not going to get into anything politics. You can explore that all you want. Uh uh uh, uh, uh map or ESRI integration ideas. I don't know what those are, but you know what I can do? <laughs> uh, 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 what? Oh, wait, I'm just going to go to normal. I'll go to, I'll go to um, chat GPT with Bing. What are map? What is it? ERSI? ESRI in integrations. I have a degree in acting, so I don't know a lot of the super technical stuff here. Environmental Systems Research Unit. Oh, G GIS software. Okay. Oh, map, map. Okay. So basically mapping software. Um, boy, like a, a lot of ideas. I, th I think, I think you're going to see Google come out with a shit ton of AI tools sitting on top of Google Maps. Um, but but you know so so let me let me see um, what are some scripting or coding languages uh, for mapping? Which are the most commonly used? So let's see what it's going to tell us here. So here's some. So Python, okay, Python's a scripting language. Sure, of course, Python does everything. JavaScript. Um, SQL, yep. Um, can you make me code in, uh, let's see, oh, I'll do Python. Um, mapping census data to major U.S. cities. That's a really crappy prompt, but let's see what it gives me. To map census data, you'll need a few different components. The census data itself, the list of cities. You can do geo... You're going to need libraries, geopandas, matplotlib, and pandas libraries, and then it wrote the code, and then it explains what the code does. This is a very basic example. Now it's talking about creating a census data CSV and how you would use that. So, so yeah, I think it gives you explanations of what to do. So, so yeah, I think you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with it. And, and with actual programming, um, where you're doing some coding and connecting data sets together, I think you can do remarkable things. But I, Google's going to come out with some crazy stuff. Um, also, Apple has their Worldwide Developer Conference announcement on Monday, Monday at 10 a.m. PST Pacific time. I think it's 11 a.m. Denver. And um, they're going to be announcing their fancy AR goggles um, that are probably going to kick the shit out of Meta's, uh, whatever the hell those are called, <laughs> their VR goggles that um, are kind of big and bulky. Um, but I think they're also going to be announcing some AI stuff. Uh, maybe things like agents, like one of the things they've already announced is that in the next iOS operating system, you're going to be able to clone your voice. 
And I would be very surprised if they didn't connect that with their Memoji technology, where you'll be able to take, you know, some version of your face, some version of your voice and create a, a generative clone, like an, like an avatar that's, that sounds like you, looks like you. Um, and th they're going to do some interesting stuff with generative agents. I do have a feeling. All right. A resume plugin, let me upload a file to ChatGPT. That's cool. Yeah, there, there's so many plugins right now. I'm very behind on, I think there's 160 or, or some some crazy amount of plugins. Let me go see how many are there. Um, plugins, plugins, plug, plug, plugins. Go to the plugin store. Ba, ba, ba. All. So there are 56 times four pages. So 224, 224 plugins. It's a lot of plugins. It's a lot of plugins. A lot of plugins. It's a lot of plugins. I don't know if you knew this. There's a lot of plugins. Why is he talking like that? I don't know. It's a lot of plugins. It's a lot of plugins. All right. Quest bought US West. Okay. Bias is inherent. I agree with that. Uh, although I think Anthropic's constitutional learning model um, it, it's not going to get rid of bias, but I think what it will allow you to do is there are going to be different models where you can opt in to the bias of your choice. If you want one that leans more this direction or that direction, um, you can do that. Or if you want something that's particularly neutral, you can do that. Don't ask it for code. Why not? It's, it's brilliant at code. All right. What else do we got here? Other questions? Sorry. I lost, uh, TikTok. If I'm scrolling when new questions come in, it jumps me all the way to the bottom and then I lost where I was in my little line. It's it's annoying. It's annoying, this TikTok thing. Universal basic income. I think that was probably in response to me talking about job disruption. Um, I think universal basic income is going to be a tool that's that's important. I think it's going to be a short-term important thing. Um, I finally understand it. Andrew Yang was talking about it in the last presidential election. And I, I was like, conceptually, I'm like, yeah, OK, that that sounds right. But I didn't quite get it. And uh, now that I've been digging deep into this AI stuff, I'm like, oh, I get it. Is ChatGPT plagiarism? So it's well, OK, that's an, it's a really interesting question. Um, the model itself is trained on kind of all of the Internet, or all of the public Internet. There's a bunch of stuff out there that's copywritten, so it's trained on some copywritten data, and then it's trained on lots and lots of non-copywritten data. So within the model, within so think of it kind of like the large language model as a brain. The brain went to lots of universities and learned lots of shit, right? And a lot of the shit that it learned is copywritten shit. And so if you ask it to give you some specific, you know, copywritten thing, it will give you things that look like that. It might quote it accurately, it might quote it inaccurately. Um, but you can get it to write in the style of a certain person. And, and there's a very much a gray area there. But the one thing that these large language models are not doing, they're not copying and pasting chunks of copywritten text and, and merging them together. That's not how it works. They're literally typing or, or sort of retrieving word by word, the next most probable word in a whole string of words. So you type in a prompt and, and when you submit that prompt, it figures out mathematically, based on all of the words that you said there, what is the next most likely word in all of the words that I know, which is like all of the words across the internet, is the next most likely word. And then what's the next most likely one after that? So it's literally generating original content out of this massive set of knowledge. Um, the other thing about the, the way you actually use these tools versus how they're written about in the press a lot. A lot of how, how these tools are described is like the robots are stealing, you know, are stealing from the humans and the robots are doing this. That's not quite right. The humans are using this tool called a large language model, which is a bot like thing, but it's a, it's a large language model. It's a prediction model actually. Humans are saying, hey, all of this vast knowledge, can you help me write a paragraph that sounds like Emily Dickinson? And pff, out it will come. 
Is that plagiarism? No, because it's writing original content. Is it is it a very much a gray area that this the the base model is is trained on all this stuff? I think it's a gray area because it's kind of like this. If I went to we'll, we'll take images for example. If I went to art school for for 4 years and I studied pop art and I love Andy Warhol and I learn everything I can about Andy Warhol. And I get out of school and and you know, I'm totally inspired by Andy Warhol and I create pieces that look like Andy Warhol. Um, is that stealing? Mm, well, you know, depending on, I, I think, is it the Keith Haring? It's, it's one of, the, one of the, the foundations that for one of the artists that have passed, sues the shit out of people if, if pieces look too much like that artist. Um, others don't really give a shit. Um, so, you know, I think it's very much a gray area. I think the IP attorneys are going to make a fortune in the next 20 years. Um, I'm I'm not worrying too much about any of that stuff. I'm just trying to keep my head down and do the work. Um, can I, AI help bury a body? I, I mean, it's actually an interesting question. There are all sorts of safety um, guardrails built into ChatGPT that if you ask it, what it thinks is dangerous stuff, it will avoid doing that. But then there's a whole hacker community that works around what they call jailbreaking ChatGPT to do all the stuff that it's not supposed to do. Uh, if you want to, um, if you want to explore that, go to Reddit and and search for uh, ChatGPT Dan D A N. Do anything now. So there's sort of this whole battle going back and forth between the OpenAI team and this group of hackers on Reddit writing these Dan bots, which are basically just super long, sophisticated prompts that trick ChatGPT into ignoring its safety guidance. <laughs> because why not? Because <laughs> this is how we play in the internet world. All right. I've been working on AI work. I was wondering what was up with the tokens. Yeah, tokens are a pain in the ass right now. Um, I saw a thing today. If, so NVIDIA just announced a new chip that's some crazy AI, you know, happy thing. Um, we're probably in not too long an amount of time, we'll have context lengths of like a million tokens. Like it, it will be, it's going to be kind of like, you know, RAM on computers. Like when I was growing up in the 80s, like you could, you could, you know, you could dial up to the internet and literally watch the characters type across screen. Like everything was so slow. And, you know, every time it got better and better and better and better. And now it's just good enough. And it'll be the same thing with these context windows. Right now they're they're a pain in the ass limitation. But but still, like even with the limitations, what, what this stuff can do is remarkable. Loving this convo. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Will AI be the end of the world? I don't think it will. Uh, like, here's the deal. You know, are there a lot of dangers there? And could it absolutely be, you know, put in the hands of bad actors to do bad stuff with it? Yeah. Uh, but these tools are also in the hands of the good actors. And I also think that we've got 50 years of Hollywood that's told us pretty convincingly that the robots will kill us. And so I think, I think at least in America, I don't know how it is globally. I think there's a default fear of AI just because of Hollywood that they're going to fucking kill us. What, what's a, what, what I think some, a more interesting, um, um, sort of way of looking at the future is, well, what if they dramatically improve things? What if they amplify our humanity and, and, and we channel the power of them in a good way? So there, there's a non-zero chance that it goes, incredibly good as well, right? I think we all know the incredibly bad it can go. I think it can also go incredibly good. And that's things like solving disease, solving energy, um, you know, cancer, genetic diseases, neurological diseases, um, just scientific breakthroughs, you know, happening on a weekly basis that historically would have taken decades. I, you know, I, if you look at the advancement in what's happening in AI right now, that's what's happening. Like every week, I, I do a newsletter called Everyday AI, and every week is dozens of remarkable things that are happening. Um, so, you know, it could, it could kill us all, but I'm, I'm trying to live on the other side of that because otherwise it'd be pretty fucking depressing. 
what's the cost for me to walk again? I don't know. If if you're not walking, I'm sorry about that. But, uh, you know, I, they just, I mean, they, they just successfully did the first Bluetooth bridge between the brain. They, they jumped um, with Bluetooth. They jumped a spinal cord injury and, and that guy's walking after 12 years of not walking. I, I assume it was done at a university. Um, there's, there's limitations to it, obviously, but, but it's the first time that they've done that. So, um, so I think breakthroughs are coming in that, which is really, really amazing. What's the best AI tool that can predict outcomes of football matches? Um, you know, start using, um, when code interpreter comes out, dump all the, all the football match data into code interpreter and go crazy. Um, tell me again how LLM is used to create another LLM. I don't quite understand it exactly, but so how they train these models is they, they use what's called human reinforcement learning or something like that. Human something reinforcement learning. So they, they build this base model and then they start asking it questions and, 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 there's a bunch of tag data in, in the set that they train. And so there's part of it is getting good data into the base model. That's when Sam Altman talks about open AI's advantage. He said they spend a tremendous amount of time and money getting the right data into the model. So the, the first thing is getting the, the base data right. And then they use humans to kind of write questions, get answers back, and then say, yes, that was good, or no, that wasn't good. And then I assume they also put in, like, here's what might be better. And so th after tens of thousands of this human reinforcement learning, that was good, that was bad, that was good, that was bad, that was good, that was bad, the, the large language, the fine-tuning of what's called, you got the base model down here, and you got the fine-tuning up here. At a certain point, there's this tipping point where it just gets really good, like like remarkably good. So, so what the what the open source community did was they basically said, okay, we've got the base model that Meta built and it leaked. So why don't we use GPT four rather than having humans do all that typing and we have to pay them five or ten or fifteen bucks an hour? Why don't we just have ChatGPT simulate humans and have ChatGPT write the questions and answer if they're good or not? And so they're basically using a fine-tuned, trained model, GPT-4, to train an unfine-tuned, you know, open-source model with no restrictions on it. So that's how they're doing it. It's, it's remarkable. Geeks are amazing. When, when, when geeks get their mind, put their mind on something, you know, they, they, they just, you know, the hacker mentality is amazing. What do I think about companies using their own version of ChatGPT to help their their software um, engine, yeah, or engagement or whatever? Oh, engineers, um, yeah. I, th I I think that I think that personal data sets or, or company data sets, internal data sets, are going to be massively powerful. I think uh, Microsoft has announced that that um, large language models are going to operate at the operating system level. So Windows eleven is going to have you're going to be able to just ask it you know, fix my, you know, windows, like configure this printer driver or whatever it might be, and it'll just go do it. Um, so these language models are going to be throughout the Microsoft suite. And I think they're going to make it very, very easy for companies to train on their own data. I think Google will do that as well. Um, so I think that's, I think that's going to be huge. Um, how do you break into AI as a business analyst? Start learning AI, start using, so what I would do if if you're a business analyst is I would start using chat GPT to support you in your work. Um, have it help you do research. Um, triple check the research. Uh, there was a lawyer that was just busted. He wrote a legal brief that cited citations of, of, you know, um, cases and the judge busted him because he just did it on ChatGPT and it made up some cases that didn't exist. And the judge was like, uh, you referred me to these cases and these are all bullshit. What's going on? Um, but but I would start using ChatGPT to support you in your business um, and, and just start learning about it and start talking about it uh, because your customers are going to start asking you about it. Medical coding. I don't quite know what the question is there, but yeah. Um, any job that has a routine task, I agree with that. Um, 
It's already massively affected my job as a software engineer. Yeah, I'm hearing what I'm hearing. Uh, I, I heard this tonight. I was at a C CEO soiree and uh, the, there were some investors talking on a roundtable and they said that the their portfolio companies are seeing 30 to 40 percent increases in efficiency uh, because of chat GPT. Um, psych grad student here. How can I have chat GPT do statistical analysis? How would I share a spreadsheet? Okay, so that's Chad B. So Chad B, go look for, I'll, I'll just go hands on it, but go look for, let's see, we'll hop over here to the YouTube. And you're going to want to go search for code interpreter chat GPT. And then there's going to be a whole bunch of videos talking about Code Interpreter. And what Code Interpreter is, is mind melting. <laughs> so with Code Interpreter, what you'll do is you'll go to your chat GPT window like you normally do. And in your little box where you type in your query, there's, there's an icon where you can upload a spreadsheet or, or a document. And when you upload that document, um, chat GPT learns it. And I think you can put in like a hundred megabyte, which isn't huge from a data perspective, but pretty beefy piece of data. And it just learns it. And then you can start asking it data analysis questions like, what's interesting about this data? What are the trends? Um, okay, how do you compare this and that? Then you can ask it things like, could you make me a map of the United States where you um, change the height of the state based on the census data or whatever data you want? And it will then write the Python code to generate a map of the United States with the states at different heights, generate the image, and hand that back to you. Like, it's mind-blowing. So go watch videos on Code Interpreter uh, and and uh, just be patient, Grasshopper. It will come. When it comes, pounce on that shit. <laughs> there are probably some third-party companies out there that are using things like Langchain um, to allow you to upload spreadsheets and, and, and play with them. Also, if you haven't played with, there, there are now plugins for like Google Sheets. There's one called GPT for Sheets. There's, there's probably a ton of them now where basically every cell in your Excel spreadsheet can be a call to open AI. So, so you can have like put one word in a spreadsheet and then the next cell over says, based on this word, generate 10 other words. And then, you know, the cells to the right of that can, can generate their own things based on that. So you can have a spreadsheet that self-populates original content. So if you want to make synthetic data, you could set up a spreadsheet in probably 15 or 20 minutes that generates, you know, massive amounts of synthetic data. That's exactly what you need. It's amazing. Everything that's coming is so amazing. And if you know what I mean, it's very amazing. It's amazing. The, the, what's coming on the internet is amazing. All right. It, can you tell it's late here and I'm a little punchy? And I had a drink or two at the CEO soiree. All right. Why is AI not working in my language? I would love to help. I would love to help to improve it. How can I do it? Okay. I don't know what language, where, where you are, but that thing, chat.openai.com understands all languages. It should work in your language. Um, it's remarkable. Like it, you can just tell it to translate this thing into that language and it does it. I had a guy, I told, I told the guy, I said, it's probably good enough at languages that it can invent a language. And he, and he, he this is on my TikTok. On, on on my recorded things, and he and he sent me back a comment. He said he said yeah, I I uh, had an interaction with it where we're talking about Star Wars, and I had it invent a language for me. So it should be able to understand your language. Uh, my guess is that you're using a non official um, app that someone put together that's just a piece of shit. So go there, chat.openai.com, and you should be unless it's blocked in your country, you should be able to use it. How do you break into... Okay, that was the business analyst one. Uh, 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 um, why is it called generative AI? Okay, so GPT, they're, they're, those three words, chat GPT, where's that come from? Generative pre-trained transformer or transformers. 
I'll get back to generative in, in a second. Pre-trained means, so historically with, with large language models or with, with machine learning, you had to bring your own data. So there were these tools out there and you could bring a massive data set and then you could put it into these large language models and then you could search on it. Pre-trained means it's pre-trained, meaning it's trained on what? In the case of GPT-4, kind of all of the internet, all of the public internet. Um, Transformer, what's that about? That's a piece of technology that Google invented in 2017 that allowed these long, large language models to be trained on massive data sets. So, so basically before you had to have small data sets, the Transformer allowed you to basically stack Transformers and... And it was kind of like the more data you threw at it, the better it got. And that's what OpenAI got really good at. Once they, once OpenAI sort of cracked the nut of the more we throw at this thing, the better it gets, they said, let's throw as much as we can at it. And it just kept getting better. And that's kind of where, why we are where we are. So, so generative means it's literally generating word by word the response to your query um, using a pre-trained data set that's sitting on top of these this transformer architecture. So that's what those three things mean. Generative means it's generating, based on your input, original content or original images, essentially from nothing, um, one word at a time or one pixel at a time in the case of the images. It's, it's pretty remarkable stuff. The more you learn about how it works, it's just like, like your face just goes, and you're like, holy crap, who invented this shit? Back to school, training, entrepreneurial innovation, universal basic income, um, kind of, I'm way lost. I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going all the way to the bottom here, and I'm just going to grab a couple of the questions, most recent questions. Thank you for that. Look at that cool little heart hat. Thank you, whoever sent me that. All right, how do I use AI to expedite social sciences research and article finding? Um, I would do something like create a Zapier automation to, you know, anytime, you know, some something is tweeted or posted on LinkedIn that's got certain keywords in it, I, I would sort of use Zapier to flag articles and then um, pull them in and um, pull them into OpenAI to summarize them. And then, uh, like, I would use Zapier to create automations because I, I think you could do lots of stuff with that. You could dump all the all the stuff it finds into a spreadsheet, and then you could do analysis on the spreadsheet. I, I think there's lots you could do there. GitHub Copilot has statistical and program ass assistance too. Oh, oh yeah, that's 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 true. So there was a question someone was asking about statistical stuff. Uh, depending how geeky you are, go over to GitHub because Copilot's got some pretty powerful. Um, pretty powerful tools on that front. Um, what happens when the AI gets the wrong info? Um, so this is an important thing, thing to know. Um, it's called hallucination in the craft. Um, they call it, uh, the, these models hallucinate. Hang on a sec. Mm -mm -mm. I'm apparently not allowed to drink liquid on camera because that violates community guideline violations. It's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. But apparently I can call the guidelines the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard, but not drink water on camera. Whatever. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. So what happens when AI gets it wrong? It gets it wrong a lot. The way the models work, they're literally prediction engines of what word is the most likely to come next in a series. So it's not actually conscious of what it's writing. It's literally saying the next word should be this and the next word should be that and the next word should be that. So it doesn't have awareness of what it actually wrote. I think there will be systems in the future that analyze what it wrote and somehow keep track of that shit. Right now it doesn't know. So if you say... Give me your opinion on this court case and cite case law that supports your argument. It will do that. Sometimes it cites case law and it'll put hyperlinks in there too. And sometimes it cites case law and those hyperlinks just go to nothing. There's nothing there. It just makes shit up. So what I would say is this. If you're doing creative writing, it doesn't matter if it hallucinates. If you're doing research, um, it matters a lot if it hallucinates. So if you're doing anything where data integrity or, or accuracy, data accuracy 
is important, then you need to double and triple check your work um, because you don't want to be like the lawyer that just got busted by the judge that said, did you write this on ChatGPT, this legal opinion, this legal brief? And he did. And he got busted. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Yes, Bing can use ChatGPT plugins. There's an innovative browser extension called ChatGPT for Bing. ChatGPT, you don't need ChatGPT for Bing, I don't think, because Bing is ChatGPT. So, but whatever. I I am I am not a fan of extensions right now because I think most of the ex extensions are just kind of these thin layers sitting on top of um, simple open AI calls. Um, most of them are just going to become features within the browsers or within operating systems anyway. So I'm just, I'm just waiting. I'm not doing anything with extensions. What would you say is currently the best usage case for AI? There are so many, like it's, it's almost like, I mean, that's why it's so mind blowing. I mean, here, here's, this will give you a sense. One of the things I have and show you this. Uh, 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 prompts.chat. So, so this is awesome chat GPT prompts. So the beginning of this document is basically just teaching you how to do prompting. But the bottom of this document is a, a, a seemingly never ending list of prompts of how you can have chat GPT act. So act as a travel guide. Um, act as a character from any movie, book, or anything. <laughs> act as an advertiser. Act as a storyteller. Act as a football commentator. Act as a stand-up comic, a movie critic, a relationship coach, a poet, a rapper, a motivational speaker. Right? This just goes on and on and on. Every one of these is a rabbit hole you can run down with ChatGPT. So the answer to the question of what's currently the best usage, like, I don't, I don't have enough time in the day to explore enough to know what what it's best at. It's really fucking good at diagnosing diseases, according to doctors, but it's really bad at citing the cases that sit underneath its decisions. It's really good at law. It's really good at code. It's really good at creative writing. Um, it's really good at... at um, at, at things like reading complicated documents and, and, you know, giving you interpretations of it, act as a florist, act as a self-help book, um, act as a statistician, act as a prompt engineer, act as a password generator, a Morse code translator, an instructor in a school. I think education, if you go look at what, um, what Khan Academy do, has done with, with Conmigo. So Conmigo is a GPT-4 chatbot that, so um, Khan Academy was given access to GPT-4 last August, August of 22. And they took until, I think it was early May this came out. They launched this thing called Conmigo, which is this, um, it, it's, it's like an instruction assistant, like a it's like a teacher. And it will teach you shit. And it, and if you just say, give me the answer to this, it won't just give you answers. It gives you like this Socratic back and forth thing to understand if you actually understand the concepts. It's, it's brilliant. So I think that these large language models are capable of being good at almost anything in the right hands. So <clears throat> I don't have a better answer for you there, but it's good at a lot. It's good at a lot, a lot of things. It's so many things. I don't know if you know this, but it's a lot of things. It's a lot of things. All right. Companies rely on AI and it gets it wrong. Could end the company. Absolutely. Companies that use powerful tools stupidly will be punished. We will see many headlines of idiotic things. Like the, the group in Samsung that put a bunch of sensitive company data on what's effectively an open, uh, an open at the time chat GPT and, you know, and, and leak their secrets. Uh, 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 uh. All right. What other questions do I see here? Oops. Hold please. I got lost in my questions. Do, 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 do. Damn. All right. 
cash flow queen. Oh, there's a couple of people sharing this live. Thank you for sharing the live. I appreciate that. There's a bunch of you in here. So if you're new here, the the reason I have those things there is that's the official ChatGPT website, chat.openai.com. Um, they do have an official app, but there's a lot of faker apps out there. So you don't need to pay for apps. You don't need to pay for ChatGPT. You can. You can pay for what's called ChatGPT+. Plus. That gives you access to plugins, web browsing, and uh, uh, GPT-4 uh, natively. But you can also use GPT-3.5, which is still incredibly powerful and very fast. All right, if this tech is so powerful and potentially dangerous, why would they open source it? Well, they didn't. So, okay, so a couple of things. So here's here's some of the scoop of what's going on. Um, so Google invents this thing called the Transformer in 2017. I think as they start exploring what this stuff can do, they realize that <clears throat> a tool that just gives you answers is a threat to Google's business model because their business model does not want to give you answers. They want to give you a list of 40 possible links and have you go click on as many of them as possible because every time you click, they make money. So they kind of mothballed this technology. They kind of, you know, just said, ah, that's good. We'll just keep this back here. But they released this paper to the world, this thing on Transformers. And so the rest of the development community kind of adopted this. And over five or so years, people were developing things. OpenAI was created as by Elon Musk as a counter to Google, all the stuff Google was doing with AI. Elon Musk saw that as a threat. So he founded um, OpenAI as a nonprofit to be an open source company to counter the proprietary shit that Google was doing. So that, that was kind of how those two became rivals. And then as Sam Altman realized, the more compute power we toss at these large language models, the better they get. We need way more compute power than we have than, than money we could plausibly raise as a nonprofit. So we're gonna take it for profit. Elon Musk huffed out of there. Um, didn't like that at all. Sam Altman said, we're going to try to control this. So, so OpenAI is not open source. It's not nonprofit anymore. It's a capped for-profit. So that happened. When ChatGPT was released, it went from zero to 100 million users in six weeks. It was the quickest adoption of software in history. I, I mean, the World Wide Web took six years to get to 100 million users. ChatGPT took six weeks. Because it took six weeks, everyone kind of panicked. Google said, oh, shit, we got to get our AI stuff out there. Meta said, oh, shit, we've got AI stuff, too. Amazon said, we've got a whole AI division coming. Like, everyone's coming out of the woodworks. Apple's announcing on Monday. I'm sure there's going to be some AI stuff in there. When Meta announced that they had these large language models like ChatGPT, they, they inadvertently kind of released um, the core large language model out to the developer community, kind of, kind of in a controlled but not controlled kind of way. And the developer community went, thank you very much. They took their core models, the Llama models, and they just sort of blew them out into the open source world. And so the developer community has been pouncing on these open source uh, or, or these, these leaked models, fine tuning them, creating their own and all sorts of stuff like that. So, um, so, it wasn't a mistake that they're open sourced, but it I think it was just in the panic of people of companies trying to stay relevant in the game as OpenAI went from zero to like a million overnight. Um, I think that's what caused some of the open source stuff. So I think that's that's what's going on there, I think. What stocks would be good to invest in for the AI boom? I don't know. Like, listen, I'm, you know, I've got a degree in acting. I'm really shitty with money. Um, you know, I think that what micro Microsoft is acting like a startup, like, like nothing I've seen since they decided to adopt the internet. Um, they're kind they're kind of gleefully, um, kicking the teeth of, of Google. Um, I think, 
open AI is really interesting. They're not public. I think um, stability AI is very interesting. Um, I don't know. I like Nvidia. They just hit a trillion dollar market cap um, and show no signs of slowing. So uh, you know, but it's a trillion dollar market cap. How do you spell Zapier? Uh, Z a p i e r. Z a p i e r. Mm -mm 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 -mm. They're trying rewarding the process now, which should reduce hallucinations quite a bit. Oh yeah, they're they're basically putting weightings on if if it gets it right, it. Yeah, I there's gonna be whole there's gonna be whole multi layer systems that that deal with accuracy. That like Anthropic, a big part of why they were started was to to deal with some accuracy stuff. So. Mm -mm. Why say hallucinate versus lying? It's called marketing. If you say that AI lies, no one would use it. If you say it hallucinates, it's like, that's kind of trippy. Oh, it's like it's on acid in the 60s. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Ah. All right. It hallucinates when writing code, too. Yeah, it does. Listen, I, I mean, here's the, here's the deal with this thing. I, my, you know, my experience with using these large language models in a work environment is that it gets you to 80% almost instantly. And then the last 20% is up to you. And you can use ChatGPT to help you get from, you know, 80 to 100. But it's really up to you to take the steaming pile of shit that ChatGPT put in front of you and turn it into something. You can sculpt it into something. Um, some use cases it's you get to like 99% really quickly. Some use cases you get to 50%. And then but I would say on average, it kind of gets you to 80% very, very quickly. Guys, it's past your bedtime. Good night. It is past my bedtime. All right, it's 1220. Yeah, I got to go to bed. Um, I started this late. I need an AI rap male voice using text input, which app is free for this purpose. There's no free ones well i'm sure there's some open source ones if you go to github there's probably shit that you can you could install on google collab or whatever um i use um 11 labs and did um i think did's got some free like you can do some amount of free stuff with did so it's d-id.com or 11 labs e l e v e n l a b s um, for some of the voice synthesis stuff. Let me see the title. I don't know what title you're talking about. If you tell me what title, I will. Why not include an act as, oh, dang it. <laughs> dang it, TikTok. Hang on. I'll see if I can find that question again. I was in the middle of a question. And I was scrolling. Please let me see the title. That's where it was. Okay. Why include the act as prompt it gives... Similar results without. So th there's something about the way that, um, hang on. There's something about the way that um, these large language models work that the act as thing makes a difference. Creative mornings. Here we go. Oh, I've got to, I'm downloading it. Damn it. My my hard drive on my laptop is full, so everything's in the cloud. So anytime I want to open something, it's not there. Do I have that? Do I have it in there? Yeah, well, it's not there. Anyway, so so the reason the act as kind of works is there, there's this thing called the latent space or vector space. The latent space is when, when these large language models go out and they learn all of the words, they're not just learning words as discrete entities. They're learning words in semantic forests, right? So if you're learning about, you know, I don't know, dogs and, and you're talking about pack animals, you know, that's one thing. If you learn about dogs as, you know, men who philander, that's another kind of semantic ocean. So when you say act as, um, you know, a Freudian therapist, 
it it kind of points the large language model into a semantic direction that all of your prompts from that point forward sort of live in that semantic area region. So I think that's why it works better. Um, but you you don't have to to tell it to act as a certain thing. It can improve things. Um, I don't always do it. I think one of the things that that works pretty universally well is when it gives you an answer, you have it, you say, review, review your answer and tell me how you would improve it um, and then have it improve it. Um, that apparently works incredibly well. Is there automation data or an information database that AI language models base their answers on or do they actively look for info? So, so the core model they stopped, they basically stopped training the core model in September of 2021 for OpenAI. Um, BARD might be different, but I think it's, it's around the same time. So they basically were ingesting all of this data and tagging all of this data and what, whatever they do to build the base large language model, it's, it's this very expensive, time-consuming thing. So that stopped in September of 2021, but they've been fine-tuning it. And now that it's connected to the internet, um, so, so when I go to this, this option that says browse with Bing, so that's now connected to the internet. So, so I'm now querying this massive, you know, data lake that's, that includes up to September, 2021, but I'm now augmenting that with, with, um, with current data. So, um, who won the Nuggets game tonight? Question mark. So that says browsing the web, and now it's searching Bing, Denver Nuggets game result, June 2nd, 2023. And the Denver Nuggets won their game, 104.93, and it's got a citation. And that citation takes me to probably some Denver paper, odds, whatever. So that's how that works. Hope that helps. Hope that helps. All right. You're a fascinating person. I'm staying tuned and look forward to learning more from you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, 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 thank you for explaining. Absolutely. OpenAI was created by a bunch of people, to be honest, not just Elon Musk. I know. And he takes he takes all the credit for it. Yeah, it, w it was a group of whatever, seven or eight people. But the, the point was, was that if you hear him tell the story, he was like, you know, Larry Page is really pissed off at me because I started OpenAI to, you know, because he was doing it wrong. Um, but yeah, there, there were a lot of people that that uh, got that thing off the ground. So yes, I'm sorry if I just gave all the credit to Elon. He's got plenty of, plenty of credit going on right now. So I'm sorry I missed where you were sharing about how to train ChatGPT. Um, yeah, I'll talk about that again. I, 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 I go over stuff a fair amount on this channel. So just hang out on my lives. I've, I've been trying to go live daily, except for when I get um, banned and put in detention. I fear AI. I believe it will be used for pure evil and was, will destroy humanity one day. You've seen too many movies. Yeah, I think Hollywood has absolutely trained us that uh, AI is going to destroy us. Um, I personally think that's kind of a boring future. Um, if that happens, that happens. I'm of the belief that we're we're early enough right now and because we have access to these tools that anything positive individuals do right now with AI is going to have a disproportionately positive effect on the future. Um, so yes, bad actors can play with this, uh, not play with, bad actors can leverage these tools to do really bad things, but good actors can as well to counterbalance that. Um, so go do some good shit with it. So rather than just sitting on the sidelines, start learning it and start doing good things with it would be my suggestion. I'm sure it's, uh, I'm sorry, sir. You shared something. I really wanted to take note. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Ask me again. I'll see if I can say it again. I don't know what I said. Maybe an AI fund, a blended AI fund. Zapier. Yes. I use Zapier to automate all, wait, onboarding all my new customers and automating estimates. Yeah, Zapier is really powerful. I mean, you have to really, the thing about Zapier is it's kind of like ChatGPT. It can do so much that it's hard to get your head around like, where do I start? So I've just been using it to create these content generation engines, which it's a cool, they're powerful. 
thoughts on Air Force, Air Force drone incident. I'm glad it was a simulation. Um, if I ask ChatGPT who I am, it makes things up a lot. Yes, that it does. It, it, it often gives me really powerful credentials. I kind of like what it makes up about me. I think I might keep some of them. Sounds pretty accurate. Yeah, it gets you to 80% pretty quickly. I've been using ChatGPT to write copy for classic cars and they've been selling like crazy. Yeah, because because that's the thing. Like, you know, the large language models have been trained on all the intern all the internet, all the public internet. And if you think about all of the car geeks that have been writing writing about every obscure, you know, detail of every classic car for the past 30 or 40 years, all of that's in there. So if you say, you know, talk about, you know, a 69 GTO judge in, you know, in the classic orange color, that's my favorite muscle car from the 70s or from the 60s. Um, it'll know a lot of details about it. And you can have it really geek out. I think that's brilliant. It's a brilliant use of it. And it's fun. Like that's a, that's a fun one. And it's, it's, you know, I, I can imagine it's incredibly good at that. Do you, uh, let's see, do you have the most, wait, do you have the most amazing camera lens I've ever seen? No, really? I, I, it's just an iPhone 11. Yeah, it's an 11. It's an 11. It's an old iPhone <laughs> with a cracked, with a cracked uh, front. End, front. Um, when will quantum computers combine with chat GPT? We're all dead, most likely. I don't think we're all dead. We're all dead, or maybe it cures cancer. When quantum computers, when when they, when they can start training these things on quantum computers, I think you'll get real time training. So the large language models won't be cut off at a certain date. You'll you'll just get things that are trained in real time. And I think you'll start. We'll start solving the world's problems. Sam Altman talked about. He thinks in our lifetime there's going to be a single year where we have as much scientific advancement as we've had in the last 500 years. So go to ChatGPT and have it give you a list of the top 20 scientific advancements in the past 500 years. Just look at that list or past top 50, whatever, some long list. Look at that list and imagine a single year where we have that level of scientific advancement compressed into a single year. Like that's the kind of thing where when you when you start saying quantum computers get overlaid with with um, with AI, that's possible. Now, could it just go ahead and fucking exterminate us all? Sure, it could. I don't like that future. So I'm, I'm not giving that any power. I give you no power. Negative future. I give you no power. Uh, can ChatGPT stop gerrymandering and draw fair boundaries? Well, it's not Chat. Well, AI is probably generating them, but who's asking the AI to generate them? It ain't the AI, the AI ain't prompting itself. That's human beings being assholes. All right, AI is going to make us build stuff faster, faster, better. I, yes, I think we're entering a great renaissance. We are at the beginning of a great renaissance. We're gonna look back at these times and go, holy crap, remember when ChatGPT just did text? <laughs> that was so stupid. You could only put 3,000 words in it? <laughs> wow, it didn't make movies back then? No, we had to watch movies on this thing called streaming services. What's that? Oh, it doesn't matter. Wait, you only had one movie for all the people? Yeah, Gone with the Wind was just like Gone with the Wind. And it just had the that one actor in it? Yeah. It was just Clark Gable. You couldn't put Superman in it? Yeah, that's what it's gonna be like. AI made up legal cases and citations. Yes, it did. And the lawyer didn't check it and he's an idiot. I like the Will Smith world, the first half. Yeah, I know, the, the first half of all the AI movies is great. It's the second half that we want to avoid. The best camera image ever. Well, thank you. I don't know what's going on with the camera image, but eh, <laughs> maybe it's just the, when you got this going on, maybe it's not the camera. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I just felt like I sounded like Ted Lasso there for a minute. Did you see the last episode of Ted Lasso? I was bawling my eyes out. God damn, that was good. All right. I used AI to help with my nonprofit kitten rescue. Cool. Save the kittens. Use AI. So what is AI good for? Saving kittens. See? You heard it here first. <laughs> That's awesome. I like that. All right, I lost my place again. I'm going back. I'm going back. I'm doing it. Uh oh. All right. Did you see the? Yes, I saw the AI drone that went rogue, but it was a simulation, so we're all good. 
uh, 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 I went back too far. I've lost my place. Okay, I just got to the kitten rescue thing. Okay, I think it's about, I think is about how to train AI prompts. You know, folks, put complete sentences in and <laughs> I won't sound like such an idiot. <clears throat> All right. Can I use AI to write my resume and make me look like a rock star? Yes, you can. Um, just so go get a resume format that you like or have it recommend a resume format that you like. Pop that into ChatGPT. Then go copy and paste all your LinkedIn stuff. Paste that into ChatGPT and say, write me a resume that follows the format of the resume up top and populates it with the details of what's from my LinkedIn profile for a job in whatever it might be. What's the Air Force incident? So so the Air Force had a simulation going of an armed drone that was set to take out enemy positions and the 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 person sending instructions to the drone basically called it back and said you can't go kill that thing and it didn't like that so it turned around and <laughs> attack the operator. Now there's a simulation, so so no shots were fired. But uh yeah, assuming there are a missile attached to that their drone, um, that wouldn't have been good. So that was the Air Force incident. So um good that they're testing, good that they're doing it in a simulated way. And they got some kinks to work out. You know, Elon Musk said we'd have full driving cars by what, four years ago, and it's still not quite there, but it's close. Well imagine flying things with bombs on them. They they might take a while to get it right. Uh, why did you say 69 GTO judge? That's creepy. I just sold one. Oh, dude, I I don't know. I, there's something about a 69 GTO judge that's just the most beautiful car, car in the world. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, do you have a website for more info? Wait. Prompts for code generation. Um, I don't, but that's the, the, these prompts right here. So prompts.chat, that'll take you to the prompting thing. Future PD is a bunch of tools. And then chat.openai.com is uh, the official chat GPT website. Um, if you're asking about information about me, I've got a link tree in my bio that, that's got a bunch of my shit there, like my company. And I think I put a link to my email and things like that. So, um, where can you get your own model to run locally on a server cluster? Just go search for, uh, just go to Twitter and search for open source LLM. Um, and, and go to, go look up trending projects on GitHub and Hugging Face. Hugging Face is a place to get all those things. There are so many of them out there that, you know, probably the place to go is Reddit. And, and and just find the large language. I'm sure there's an open source large language model subreddit um, and just go start hanging out with those geeks and you'll find some, some amazing stuff. I'm a fantastic teacher. Thank you very much. I appreciate the kind words. And I got to go to bed. I got to go to bed, people. What, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Why are you watching me? Stop. Stop. It's not that interesting. I don't know the I got all. Who are you, people? Hmm. Let's give AI the goal of making the Star Trek Society. Yeah, I think it could. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna see some really, really amazing things. I think there's gonna be some headline-making catastrophes, um, but I think we're also gonna see some remarkable, remarkable stuff coming out of this. Don't forget, we're we're so early with this, and and you know. AI has been around for a long, long time. So the foundation of all this is has been around for a while. But what's new is what what started on November 30th last year, 2022, is when ChatGPT came out. It gave regular people access to these tools that were largely the the you know the territory of data scientists and researchers. And and basically Sam Altman said, here's a gift. Do you know that they wrote ChatGPT in two weeks? Do you know that in the documentation for GPT-3, which came out like a year and a quarter before ChatGPT, the instructions for how to build ChatGPT were in the documentation for GPT-3 for like a year. 
And Sam Altman said, we assumed someone would build it and no one built it. And then last November, uh, I think it was because Microsoft was going to announce their billion dollar investment. Sam Altman said, hey, uh, engineering team, can you whip up that chat GPT thing? They built it in two weeks. And six weeks later, it hit 100 million users. I mean, that's remarkable. Fastest adoption of software in history. All right. Want to be a part of this renaissance? What's a good field or thing to study with AI? <sighs> well, I think it's going to be ubiquitous. So, so I would sort of push that back on you and say, what is the thing you're most interested in? And then I would dig deep on how can I do what I'm interested in better, faster, more powerfully with AI. So if it involves images, start learning mid-journey or stable diffusion or um, uh, the new Adobe generative fill. If, if, if you look at what's happening with generative fill within Photoshop, it's remarkable. Um, if it's around words or business or analysis or programming or things like that, then dig into ChatGPT. But I like I, I just think it can't hurt anyone right now to go to that address, like why I have it on screen. That's the official ChatGPT website. Just go there, start using ChatGPT to solve problems in your life. Um, I would say lean into what you're passionate about, what you're good at, um, what you have a point of view on and just figure out which tools can support you in doing that. Because again, it's so fucking capable that it can do anything. If I ask ChatGPT to write a book about vampires and you ask the same question the same way, will we get the same story? We will not. Um, in fact, you can do that yourself. Um, create a new chat, you know, put in a decently sophisticated um, prompt about your vampire book, have it write a chapter or whatever, or an outline. Um, and then start a new chat and use the exact same prompt and generate it. And you'll, you'll see, it'll give you, it'll give, give you different things. Um, and that's largely because they've got, there's a thing called temperature. If you, if you use the, the back end of these GPT tools, I think chat GPT is set for 0.4. It goes from zero to one. Um, zero is the most factual answer. So if it's zero, you, you'll likely get things that are all the same. But if you dial that up to one, you'll get things that are much more creative. Um, so I think default chat GPT is somewhere near the middle. Everything using chat GPT APIs are going to be paid services, right? Because developers using APIs need to pay for its subscriptions. Yeah, but they're, they're relatively cheap. I, I mean, unless you're doing, unless you're doing training and embedding, which can be expensive, um, just the calls to open AI, like I set a max monthly spend of 20 bucks. I don't think I've ever exceeded 10. And I like I do a decent amount with this. I don't do a ton. 65 Riviera is more beautiful. I don't know. I don't know. 69 Judge. The, the, the Riviera, is, it's a bit more of a boat. It's, I don't know. It's a little rounder. I see where you're going. It's, it's maybe more unique. I like the, I like the muscly aspect of the GTO. Which job sector will it be affected negatively from a AI from full stack cloud and DevOps? I don't know. Uh, all, like all, all of them. I don't know if they'll be negatively impacted. They're just going to be dramatically impacted. The negative part is some jobs are going to go away. Some jobs are going to get very, very different and people might not like them. There's a really sad Reddit post about a guy that did 3D modeling. And he said, I hate, I'm quitting my job. He was lamenting his job because he's no longer a 3D modeler. He now just writes prompts and then curates images that this thing generates and he, and he hates his life and he's, he's leaving the profession. So I think you'll see some of that, but I think, I think every single sector is going to be impacted by this, especially for things like DevOps and a, a lot of that stuff, the coding and the, all, all the tech stack. Um, just every, all that complexity is just going to get subsumed by the simplicity of the large language model sitting on top of it. So, so this is really interesting. So right now you've got this incredibly complicated technical world, right? With cloud services and, you know, DevOps, and you've got all these machines and platforms and services. And then you have entire companies 
that build software to manage and glue all this shit together, right? And you have entire tech divisions to do that. So some combination of services and technologies and human beings make sense of this madness down here. Well, what large language models are going to do is they're going to put a layer up here that just does all this shit automatically. And so companies that serve that, that, that thrive on the complexity of the shit below it because they figured out how to simplify this stuff, they're going to get displaced. And people who spend their days doing menial, I don't know, data analysis, they're going to get displaced. And so that, that whole middle layer sitting on top of all that complex stuff down beneath, I think that's where you're going to see the biggest, the biggest thing. The algorithm has me. I don't know what that means. Invest in stocks and cryptos and invest in metaverse as well. I would not recommend investing in crypto or metaverse right now. Let AI take take off. So I spent about a year deep diving in blockchain and NFTs. And what was interesting was the deeper I dug into that, the less I believed in it. And with AI, it's the complete opposite, where the deeper I dig, d dig the more my mind is blown. Um, I think AI is going to drive adoption of blockchain but we're going to come up with the use case first and then the technology as opposed to right now where crypto and, and blockchain and NFTs are kind of leading with technology. And, and so many of those companies are just money grifts. They're just, it's just bad. Um, is that GPT, how to build guide still available? GPT, how to build the prompts.chat. Yeah. E -e -e. Prompts.chat. Is, I think that's the thing you're talking about. Uh, 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 you should be a be an affiliate for them. I know I talk about them all the time. They should give me, they should give me access to Code Interpreter, the motherfuckers. Point seven over here. It was preset to point seven. Oh, ChatGPT was preset to point seven. GTO all day. Let's go, GTO people. Truck drivers are the worst. Well, the Riviera is not a truck. It's a boat. Boat drivers are the worst, maybe. Um, platform is preset to 0.7. Yeah, so it's decently creative. I thought it was lower than that for some reason. Mm -mm -mm, mm -mm -mm. How do professionals in fields using AI set themselves apart from the folks who can now fake the skills? That's an interesting question. Um, the part that's still important is the critical thinking and the strategy. So how you decide what, what you want these tools to do and then how you're going to use it and how you deploy it, that's still humans. And so if you have someone that's just using ChatGPT to generate documents that look like that, that's just a different thing than someone who can look at a bunch of output from ChatGPT and go, that I like, that I don't like based on their 30 years of experience. So I think how you combat charlatans is how you always, because here's what's going to happen. Every, everyone has access to these tools. So the perceived level of idiocy in the workplace is kind of, is going to kind of rise like this where, Oh, you know, maybe Janie isn't such an idiot because her, her writing quality went up because she's using a tool but then what you're going to see is people with actual experience and brains and strategy are going to learn how to use these tools just at a, diff a slightly different level. So you're going to start to see some work do this. So all work's going to go like this, and then the good people are going to rise to the top, as they always do. Because these are just tools in the end, and the people that are smartest at using and deploying the tools are going to be the ones that rise above the noise. And so be smart. One, and start learning AI. Start getting good with this stuff so that you're one of those ones that rises above the charlatans because there will be lots of them. Good thing about ChatGPT is it will force a human to see that their mind is not what are. What they are is that their mind is not what they are. Um, yeah, I, I think that one of the silver linings of this, the disruption that's coming is is that I think it's going to allow people to be a bit more free to say, what do I really want? 
Because like if what I really wanted was to make beautiful images, I've got photography and I'm good at that. But like when I see a good illustrator, it like makes my heart ache because I want to be able to do that. But I suck at drawing. I suck at it. Um, and then Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion come along and I can take the idea that I have in my head of something I want to visualize and now I can just visualize it. And so I think you're going to see a lot of people discovering creative sides of themselves or, or creative expression of who they are. Um, that they might not have otherwise ever gotten to. I think it's going to be beautiful. I, I think people. I think the amount of reinvention, human reinvention, that's coming is just going to be amazing. Uh, 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 preach, go, Chat GPT. I tell you, I tell you, it's going to save you. The AI is going to save you. It's going to save you, brethren. It's going to save you. All right, I can do a few more questions and then I got to go. It's one in the morning here. What are you people doing to me? What are you doing with your lives? I hope you're drinking. <laughs> All right, I use ChatGPT to mimic a human AI persona with the experience and skills. I use it as a CFO. Yeah, there's a cool project. There's a guy on uh, TikTok called McKinsey Bose who's got a, a project called GPT Boss. And he's, it's basically a wrapper app that sits on top of uh, GPT-4, um, but it's all these different characters and generators. And so there's like a CFO and there's a coder and a lead engineer and a copywriter and a marketing expert and an SEO expert. And so he's built all these sort of pre-prompted tools that you can use to run your business. It's pretty, it's pretty slick. All right. What happens when the tools become so easy anyone can use them? That's what we're in the middle of finding out. I mean, yeah, like writing uh, a, uh, like, like you can do anything right now. You can do anything. So, so the tools are easy enough that anyone can use them right now, but you have to have a little bit of skill to sort of piece part the different things together. But Within two or three years, there's going to be slick interfaces on top of all this stuff. It's going to be fucking miraculous. So what, what that means is the people that start learning it now are going to be way better at this shit than when it gets easy to use two years from now. So all the opportunity is happening right now. Let's call this the summer of opportunity. Get curious about AI. Go to that website, chat.openai.com. That's the official chat GPT website. Go to prompts.chat and just start playing with the prompts there and just learn about prompting. Start learning. It's just a tool. I'm a senior Oracle DBA and I use it to help me write documentation. Yeah, it's really good at documentation and, and parsing things. I got ChatGPT. Chat, ChatGPT, knowledge up to year 2021. Guess who sings the song Antihero accurately? Well, you can, I mean... You might be able to get it to, I, I mean, it can't guess anything unless it's been fine tuned to things after 2021, it can't know that. So maybe you had a trained model, but GPT-4 is connected to, to the internet now via Bing. So that is all water under the bridge. The, it only goes to September, 2021 thing. That's over. That's over. Because it's all connected to the internet now with the Bing, the Bing from the Microsoft. Microsoft, company out of Redmond, Washington, they made software, they made shitty software for years. And then they discovered this AI stuff, and all of a sudden they're like fucking Apple. What the hell? What the hell is going on in the world? I used to hate Microsoft for years. I'm an Apple fanboy. And it, can I just say this? Apple's got their worldwide developer conference on Monday. If they do not blow it out of the fucking water and make themselves relevant again, what is going on in the world? <laughs> uh, that was an interesting comment. I think it will make real artwork even more valuable. Absolutely agree with that. I think that authenticity, things like in-person music, real art, um, you know, video of actual human beings sharing their stories authentically. I think the value of authenticity is going to go up dramatically. So, so we're going to see this sea of synthesized content that just sort of boils up. 
And I think there's going to be a hunger. And, and I, the, the 2024 election in the U.S., there's going to be so much disinformation and misinformation that's going to be AI amplified. It's going to be insane. I think the backlash of that, so think, you know, 2025 will be an incredible demand for authenticity. And I think the value of authenticity is going to go up. I think you're going to be able to build businesses around it. I think authentic arts, authentic experiences, I think value goes up dramatically. So I totally agree with that, Holly. What's the best way to use this little, wait, what's the best way to use this with little tech knowledge? I, like, again, I would just go to um, just start learning chat GPT, like y use it as, as an arts major, as a humanities major. Um, have it write song lyrics, have it write poems, have it help you um, create outlines for a book, write chapters of a book, have it help you rewrite, you know, if, if you wrote, wrote, like I wrote the shitty beginning of a screenplay and I had to help me rewrite the first couple of scenes of it just to see how it did. It did great. Like, um, use it for things that you're passionate about. Don't worry about the tech piece of it. If you want to do technical stuff, have ChatGPT start to teach you that. Like you can start to geek out and run down rabbit holes if you want to, but leave it leave it up at the tech leave it up at the at the humanities level. Um, it's it's remarkable at that shit. Like GPT four in particular, like its writing is really good. You have to you have to get good at prompting it. You to, if you give it shitty prompts, it will comply and give you shitty answers. All right, what's the best way to use? Okay, that was that. It's fascinating. All right. Have you tried prompt AI PRM? I have not. It's really good. Okay. I'll check it out. Um, I've been doing some consulting for ad agencies interested in text to video. I think my summer will be short lived. Well, I, I, I think, listen, I think companies are going to be hungry to figure out what in the hell these tools are. So I'd say consulting with this stuff, even though, I mean, here would be my only advice. If you're consulting with AI, don't, Tell them you're an expert. No one's a fucking expert right now. Everyone's trying to figure this out and everything's changing week to week. Um, so I would just say be humble about it. Just say, hey, I'm learning as much as I can about this AI stuff. You know, can I come in and tell you what I know? Um, and just, you know, try not to put yourself on too much of a pedestal because this shit is changing so fast. It's it's very humbling. Like I, I kind of pride myself in being able to quickly grok shit and keep ahead of stuff. I'm not even close to keeping ahead of this stuff. It's moving so fast. National digital banking starts in America on July 17th, 2023. Are you ready? No, I'm not. That's going to be interesting to see what they do with it. We'll see. I'm not all that worried about it right now. Thanks for sharing your time and knowledge. You're welcome. You're funny. Thank you. Agreed. But looks aren't everything. <laughs> All right. Do you think there will be a regression toward the mean? AI content of AI content of AI content. That's a really interesting question, Krista. I don't know. I mean, I suppose if you, well, yeah, it's really interesting. I suppose at the point at which you pull humans out of the contribution matrix, right? If you just, if you say right now, humans are still very actively prompting and, and refining and crafting content in conjunction with AI. If the AI gets so good that, that humans increasingly kind of back out of the process and just let the machines do the bulk of the work, I think at that point you might start to see kind of diminishing quality, but, but at the same time, as, as the tools get more sophisticated, I think we're going to see the tools get trained on increasingly large data sets. Like, like at some point, the large language models are essentially going to be the entire output of the history of humanity. And, and it will be updated in real time. So at that point, I don't know. I think, I think we'll just be able to do magical, 
magical shit with it. But I don't know. It's possible. I don't know. I don't know enough about large data degradation <laughs> to 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 talk to that at all so sorry about that i'm I, i'm just i just ain't you know, i don't have the book smarts <laughs> all right i got to go to fucking bed people i got to go to bed i hate to see what the military's going to do with it they just shot their own well in a simulation a drone using ai went back and attacked its commander because it didn't like the the, the uh the command it gave the drone so it went back and and shot the operator so they're gonna have to they're gonna have to tweak that little algorithm all right all right i got a few more here for sure i'm an ai neophyte welcome for anyone who's new how do you know this stuff i just started so so here's how i know this stuff i i went through i i discovered the world wide web personally in um 1994 when when I when I discovered you know what what had been out for a few years um I had a massive epiphany that holy shit this is going to change the world that like the world has changed it's just no one knows it yet and I started one of the first digital agencies so I've been through this before and and this AI thing had the parallels to what I was going through with the world wide web in the mid 90s and what's going on with this stuff now are insane um, and so the minute I had this epiphany with chat GPT, like I've been playing with language models before that. And then I had just a breakthrough with chat GPT, like, holy shit, everything's different. Um, I just dove in. I started this TikTok channel. I started an AI salon. I started a newsletter. Um, I, I basically started saying yes to every speaking gig I could get every workshop. Someone said, Hey, can you do a workshop? I'd go do that. Um, so I've just been insufferably diving deeper and deeper into learning everything I can about it. And it's impossible to learn because there's so much of it. Um, but, but just got curious about it. Cause I think it's incredibly important. Just enjoying the ride. Thank you. Stranger in a stranger land. We are in surreal times. I feel like we're in post. We're, we're entering a post sci-fi world. I feel like there's just all these sci-fi movies. It's like, check. Yeah, we can do all that shit now. Check. <laughs> we can do most of that shit now. Check. Oh, we don't have time travel yet, but, you know, we'll probably figure that out in the next decade. Um, excellent perspective. Thank you very much. Very cool. Thanks so much for sharing that. Okay, listen, I got to go. It is one in the morning here. Peace out, everybody. I appreciate it. Thumbs up to all of you. I will check back in tomorrow, probably. And uh, I hope you're well. Go there if you haven't. Go to chat.openai.com. Start using ChatGPT. Do it. Good night.